Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, I'm back in the other car. I haven't done a thing for a while because I've been driving the red car and while I can record in the red car, I don't have CCTV in the red car so I can't record the journey. So that's it wasn't that much to it's just trouble with cars in there. They should standardise cars. It's ridiculous. But everything should be standardised. We are living in the Middle Ages. We don't know it, and we think that the Middle Ages were the Middle Ages. But the people who lived in the Middle Ages didn't know that they were living in the Middle Ages either. So we are living in the Middle Ages, a time of warfare, strife, petty dictators, famine, the Middle Ages. So, and we're still gonna be in the Middle Ages when you die, so. I don't think that uh, all of a sudden we're going to move to some sort of enlightenment because we're not. not. Not in the near future anyway. We might do, if we go on a global currency standard, then we might move into an enlightenment. I think that's our best bet. Now, Angry, you might say, how on earth is that going to work? Well, the answer is that at the moment every country for the most part, prints their own money and they spend and they spend on two things usually getting re-elected which involves a ton of vanity projects and uh, giving money away to potential electors and uh, fighting foreign wars which are for the most part pointless and always extremely highly expensive. So. What happens is the uh, central bank then buys the government debt, which allows the treasury to print more money. And uh, so as a result, the population pays for it, either directly through tax or indirectly through loss of purchasing power because of the increased amount of money chasing the same amount of goods and services. So that's economics in a nutshell, right? If you just get the grasp, of what I've told you between the last village and this village, then really you understand economics. So what, how does that link into a new enlightenment, you might ask? Well, supposing the government couldn't debase the currency, supposing the government couldn't print loads and loads of new banknotes whenever it wanted to bribe the electorate or fight a new foreign war, then what would happen is they'd have to go back to the population and say, look, we want to, you know, fight a war in Yemen, cause mass starvation, kill thousands of children, bomb a few wedding parties. Uh, can, we, uh, can we put income tax up? Or can we put your national insurance up? And the population would quite rightly say no. So, Having what we call a hard money, one that's not, that's impossible to debate, one that the government can't just conjure out of thin air, puts a stop to a lot of the th all the, the things that are wrong with the world. Mainly uh, government, uh, it, it, it sort of puts the brakes on large government that does everything and uh, is responsible for your entire life, you know, in return for this flimsy excuse that is necessary for your own security and so um, the sooner we move to a currency that's uh, not you know that's a that's a standard currency worldwide that's a hard currency that can't be debased then the sooner the world's gonna just calm the fuck down you know and just all this stop fighting the wars and stuff and you might say well Really, you know, really? Is it that simple? And the answer is yes. <laughs> it is that simple. And uh, governments in the past have been tied to uh, commodities. The currencies have been tied to commodities. And the commodities have hard limits on them. 
So if the government offers to exchange their paper money for a commodity like gold, which is the traditional one, that can't be conjured out of thin air, then pretty soon they realise there's a limit to the bank, the number of banknotes they can print. Because they can't keep finding gold to give away to people who would rather have the gold than the banknotes. So, from about uh, 19, uh, 1913 onwards, uh, with significant uh, events at 1933 and 1971, the government has, has, has pulled itself off of exchanging any commodity for banknotes. And the only thing you can exchange a £10 note for is two £5 notes. Um, and so the, the paper is just a bit of paper, you know, and it's, it's kept afloat by its historical, uh, the, the fact that historically it's had value. At a time when it was linked to commodities, it was actually worth something. And even now, people still think that the pound is uh, backed up by uh, vaults stuffed full of gold in Threadneedle Street. They still, they still think that every single pound that they spend is uh, is backed up. You know that the bank has got the full faith and confidence of the Bank of England and the UK government behind it. So. And uh, if you think about it, I mean, we are standardised on time, aren't we? I mean, as far as I know, I know people are a bit funny about time zones and they insist on on having been half an hour ahead or half an hour behind, I think, Iran uh, is half an hour ahead or something, or half an hour behind the, the actual hours. And also some uh, territories, for example, are... Um, in the in the technically in the wrong time zone because they sort of skip the, the date line sort of skips around them you know the timeline skips around them because of the territorial uh, considerations so for example i think the uh tenerife is on the what was it uh madeira i think is on in the same time zone as portugal uh because it's portuguese and it just suits them all to be on the same time and seeing as they're in the middle of the uh the ocean, uh, Madeira, then uh, it doesn't actually make an awful lot of difference to them because they still, uh, I mean, they might get up a bit earlier. I mean, it might be a bit lighter in the morning and a bit darker in the evening for them, for example, um, or, or the other way around. But, uh, you know, it's not a big deal, is it? I mean, when it's, if you want to get up when it's light, you get up when it's light. You don't care what time it is. Oh, so turn the heating up over here because we've had a lot of snow actually you might see a bit of it still but that's the reason why i was in the red car because uh red car's four wheel drive and uh, much better in the snow this one not so good um, let's turn the blowers on for a second get the windscreen defrosted the De uh, so this car hasn't been used for a while so it's a bit wet uh, you know, humid internally, so it needs a good dry out. But you might still see a bit of snow here and there. You might have seen a bit of snow. But it'll all be gone. But in an hour or two, it'll all be gone. It's going up, I think, to 14 degrees. There's a bit on the verges here and there. So if we're coordinated on time, we all use hours, minutes and seconds, right? Because the world, the world, I mean, basically that is the currency of the rotation, isn't it? The, the uh, 15 degrees an hour. So it's like, um, I suppose we don't all have to use the same currency, but it would be, it would be so much better if we did. And it would be so much better if it was a hard currency. And the governments, of course, will, will never agree to this because um, they've all got their individual economic policies, for example. And we're finding this, you know, even within the European Union, where the policy for Germany and the policy for Portugal and Spain and Greece and Italy uh, don't really align all that well. And uh, 
policy for, uh, I don't know, New York or wherever doesn't really align with that of uh, Tennessee in the United States. Although they do have a, a, the federal budget is much more geared up to subsidize the poorer states. Whereas in European Union, the German, uh, <laughs> the Teutonic uh, inclination is not to subsidize the poorer countries, but to tell them to pull their socks up and uh, and be more German. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's why we'll, we'll never really have like a government. Although the Bank of Inter International Settlements is uh, working hard to try and do something along those lines uh, and, and have, but not really for um, the population, you know, the citizens. Uh, the Bank of International Settlements is the sort of the central bankers bank and uh, they're more interested in uh, special drawing rights, for example, which are uh, a currency that the banks, the central banks use to sort of uh, between themselves, you know, when one central bank gets into trouble, then the others create a few special drawing rights and uh, and bail them out. And then, then that money is then dissolved when it's no longer needed. Um, but there is also a movement towards making, allowing um, citizens to have accounts at the central banks and to uh, do away with the commercial banks to a large extent. So, uh, for example, I mean, if the Bank of England, if the base rate was, uh, I don't know, 0%, and you go along to your commercial bank and you say, I'd like to borrow some money, and they say, yeah, well, uh, 3%. And you're like, well, how can it be 3%? You're borrowing it from the Bank of England, 0%. How come you're charging me 3 and they were like, oh, well, that's, you know, that's the cheapest we lend out at. Because there's a chance you won't pay it back, I suppose. And, and uh, you know, we'll be plus, you know, we've got all these buildings, we've got all these staff, we've got our pension plan to think of and everything. And so um, people like me have long thought, why can't I just have, why can't I walk into Threadneedle Street and just say, I'd like to open up a bank account, please, with the central bank and do some borrowing at zero percent. Well, the Bank of England, I think, bearing in mind in 2008, uh, the last when we had the last sort of economic downturn, well, here's some snow for you, look, on the left here. When we well, had the last economic downturn, and what happened was that um, the government printed a load of money and then uh, gave it to the banks and said, look, lend it out. And the, and they, the banks didn't lend it out. The banks said, actually, we're going to, uh, uh, we've, we've got a better use for that money. We'll put it in our reserves so that you don't, uh, you don't criticize us next time that we're insufficiently capitalized and, and might need a bailout. And uh, also we quite like to buy a load of our own stocks and shares back uh, so that the price of the shares goes up because our salaries are rather dependent on increasing the stock price and uh, rather than do anything uh, positive or innovative or productive to make the shares go up we would rather just buy them back which will have the same effect and uh, happy days uh, crew champagne and crystal all round you know so the government, I think the economists of the government said, look, we can't make the mistake of giving all this money to the banks again. Uh, we need to give it to Joe Schmo and the public. Hence the, uh, but even then they haven't really given it away. I mean, they gave us, I think they gave us 10,000 pounds at the beginning about a year ago. But then after that, it's all been loans. And, uh, you know, you have to, well, if you've been in business for a while, you have to think hard about taking on a loan you know you, you really uh, loans are not free money loans have to be paid back and what you're doing is you're saying uh, and quite a lot of people do say this I haven't got the money 
to pay for X, Y, and Z now. But I think I will probably have the money to pay for X, Y, and Z in the future. So what you do is you take out a loan to buy X, Y, and Z in the expectation that you will be able to pay pay for it at some point. And, um, and the unfortunate reality is that if you don't have the money to pay for X, Y, and Z now, the chances are you probably won't have the money to pay for it next week, next month, or next year either. And that the best thing to do is not to buy X, Y, Z. And uh, I have to, uh, I have to sort of think about this when I'm offering finance for dentistry because, um, you know, I mean, I'm all for uh, taking out finance when it's smart. Uh, and you know, and uh, for example, if you're refinancing, if you're paying, if you've got a thirty thousand loan outstanding, and the repayments are crippling you, it might make sense to finance it over a longer period, which is what we did. Or if you're uh, borrowing at six percent, it might make sense to refinance at three percent. You know, for example, with a mortgage or something. So, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, when I wouldn't ever talk patient into taking out finance because uh, usually not having that means that they don't have the money now and they have even less money in the future because they've got these uh, crippling rates of interest to pay that's why we only offer zero percent finance we literally only offer zero percent finance um, I'm not you know if someone uh, wants to take out a loan for their teeth on their credit card, then that's up to them. But I certainly wouldn't recommend that they did it. Even though at the end of the day, and a lot of dentists would, I know that, you know, because at the end of the day, you're the beneficiary, aren't you? You're going to get 10 grand or whatever, five grand's worth of work, you, you trouser the money. But then I don't know, I, <laughs> I don't know whether it's just me. I'm obviously ill suited to be a dentist because I would not sleep that night knowing that that person is going to be living on baked beans or having to sell their house and live in their mother's basement because I burdened them with a, a debt due to some bloody greedy bank rentier. So let's standardise, let's standardise. Let's standardise all the currency, let's standardise all the units. I'm not particularly attached to the mile. Personally I think the mile is a... I understand, I was brought up with miles and yards and furlongs and things like that. I can understand why we use a unit that, you know, is based on how much land is necessary 400 years ago to support one man and his family. Uh, <laughs> you know, acres and all that. But, um, Apparently, people prefer decimal because uh, obviously we use decimal money, uh, number system, and so moving a decimal point is much easier uh, when you're calculating things. So, you know, fingers and toes win over quarts and uh, gallons. So, let's get on with that, and then we can start thinking about all driving on the same side of the road. That'll be a bit, I mean, that'll be a, I mean, that would be a big problem because a lot of infrastructure would have to be redesigned. <laughs> That's interesting, I don't know. I mean, would, could Spaghetti Junction be repurposed for people to drive on the right? I would think that if they, when they come off it, if they're going onto a road where they're expected to drive on the right, it probably could. It's only a case of, uh, reversing the flows, isn't it, on all the on all the roads. Um, you might end up with a, instead of a, a small road going into a big road, a big road going into a small road. So there would be a bit of it. And then um, the railways, for example, on the continent, the trains drive on the right. And the, uh, on the UK, the trains drive on the left. And that, that would be a massive problem because um, all the signals are on the relevant side. So, uh, for example, all the signals uh, facing you as you drive on the left in a train on the left, 
and if you were to drive on the right, you couldn't use the signals on the right because they'd all be facing the wrong way. They'd be facing, they're all facing away from you. So every single signal in the country would have to be turned round. And then, and then uh, you've got the problem of, uh, you know, all the sidings would be back to front and stuff like that. You'd have to, you'd have to back out onto the main line and stuff like that. So probably the railways, I don't know, that would be a step too far. People would say, look, this system works as it is. Why, why bollocks it up, you know, by just on a point of principle? And I can understand that. But there's nothing wrong with us all using the same money. I mean, really, and, and if at the same time it, uh, you know, if at the same time it introduces some measure of financial security, uh, privacy or privacy, and allows the world, to, anyone, anywhere in the world to transact with anyone else uh, securely and uh, with, with that, you know, for less than a penny, for less than a halfpenny, in terms of transaction fees, then uh, why not? You know, I mean, really, why not? And the side effect of that would be that the government would be, ineffectively, would be deprived of revenue, and that's a whole another subject, you know, about why. Uh, the government, or, or the ways that the government could raise revenue, if it, if they had to do it on the basis of only uh, getting paid for things that the population supported and wanted to pay them for, rather than uh, spend uh, tax, have the last say on taxation, spend the taxation on what the hell they liked, and then when and and when there's a shortfall, which there always is, make up the difference just by printing money. Which robs everybody, you know. It robs, it robs me. It robs you. It robs the people at the local shopping centre. It robs the uh, pocket money out of the children at the school here. Uh, all, all of us lose purchasing power to pay for, um, you know, the eat out to help out scheme or whatever. Just whatever. I don't know. See, look at this ice. Isn't that terrible? Well, I mean, it's not terrible, but I mean, this this is a classic case of council doesn't want to grit down here because it only leads to the school, and the school won't grit down here because technically their responsibility ends at these gates. So that's, uh, that is a classic case of two public bodies uh, and uh, a task that needs doing falling, falling between the gap of the turn. Anyway, it's raining now and it's expected to rain all morning, so that'll be the end of the snow. So, well, I thought I'd come in this car today because it's reasonably safe to drive and uh, we've got a camera, which hopefully if it's working, will uh, give you an idea of the snow that we've had. Plus I might upload a few pictures of the snow anyway, just so you can see how jolly it looks. I love the snow. All right, okay. Nice to talk to you. See you again. Bye.